Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting Cole from Zombicide Invader by Simon Games. Hey everyone, Matty from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to episode 6 of this Zombicide Invader painting series. Today we're painting Cole, he's one of the survivors that you can play as in this sci-fi themed version of the Zombicide franchise. Now just before I get into talking about what I'm doing here with Cole, this video does follow a slightly different format I guess you would say to all of the other videos that I've done because this is the first video that is not um, done as a time lapse or where the footage is sped up, so this one is done in real time. Now the reason that I've done that is because I was thinking for a little while about doing a real time video because I've watched plenty of other painting videos and I do like it when they're in real time, but also one of my subscribers mentioned in a comment that they do like, uh, that they do prefer videos that are real time as opposed to time lapse. So I thought, well, seeing as I've been thinking about doing it for a little while and um, someone else mentioned that they like watching it as well, I might as well have a go at putting one together. Now, the reason why I, this is the first time that I've done a real time one and why I've been sticking with time lapse so far is. Um, because when it's done as a time lapse, you can get more footage in in the same amount of time. The thing that I do prefer about real time videos like this is that because it's not sped up, you can see more closely what the person is doing as they're painting. But so far, I have opted to go with time lapse because, yeah, I, I can fit more footage in. And because I'm not putting these videos together to be tutorials, it's just me documenting my progression in the hobby, the time lapse format suited that better. But I thought seeing as, um, yeah, it, it was mentioned that at least someone um, prefers this format, um, I do like watching them as well. I thought I'd have a go at putting one together. So I'd really, really like it if you could leave in the comments down below, first of all, what your preference is, whether you like it to be um, like this, where it's not sped up, or whether you do prefer it to be sped up. So whether you like to be able to see more closely what the paint is doing, or whether you just like seeing more footage, because you know I do, I do want to put together the um, best videos that I can for, for you guys that are watching, and I, I would really, really like to um, find out which style of video you prefer. Um, there was a lot more editing that went into this one, so it was more time consuming to put this video together than, um, than most of the others in the past. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do want to put together the, the videos that are going to be um, best to watch for, for everyone. So yeah, so please do leave in the comments down below which format of video you prefer. All right, so with all of that out of the way, I can now get on to talking about what I'm doing with coal so far. So, like I have been for a while, I started off with a Zenithal Prime. Now, in the previous videos in this series so far with the Xenos, the Zenithal Prime that I've been doing was used as pre-shading. So, getting the black, the grey, and the white from directly above, um, I was using that as pre-shading for them because I was airbrushing on their skin tones. And because painting with the, the airbrush um, has just naturally, the paint goes on thinner than when using a normal brush, those tones from the prime come through. Um, it's much, much more difficult to do that when just using a brush because you have to have your paints much, much thinner. Um, so when I'm um, going to be painting with a brush, I still do the Zenithal Prime and I use that as a guide for my highlighting and shading. So first of all, it gives me an idea of the forms, but also I can take a picture of um, the prime um, or the mini when it's primed and then when I get to highlighting and shading I can then refer back to it to see where the brightest highlights are and then where the deepest um, shadows are and I think that has a really really big impact on how a mini looks when it's finished is having the brightest highlights and the deepest shadows in the correct spot because it just makes it look right and not that you can see what I'm doing there, but I'm doing the doing that doing right in inverted commas. Um, 
because when I first started painting for a while, my highlighting and shading was very, very basic. It was pretty much just base coat and then one level of highlighting, one level of shading, try and achieve it in one go. And they were almost definitely not in the right spot. I mean, maybe sort of generally speaking, but yeah, where the, the brightest highlights and the deeper shadows should be, um, yeah, weren't, weren't really where they should be. Um, but then from there I went on to layering. So thinning the paints down, and just building the, the highlights and the shadows up over several layers, feathering the edge of each layer out to make sure they blend from one layer to the next. And that allowed me to really push the contrast and get much, much brighter highlights and much, much deeper shadows because of the way that the um, colors blended together. There weren't those defined lines that made it really obvious where each of those layers were. And so by being able to push uh, the contrast a lot more and being able to refer back to the pictures that I've taken of the prime I was able to make sure that I had just you know all of the highlights in the right spot But not only the highlights in the right spot, but the brightest ones in the right spot and the darkest um, shadows um, where they should be and I think that's really a thing that just ties a mini together um, well in the end so that then when someone looks at the mini it all makes sense as being you know I'm um, I um, flick through Instagram plenty looking at um, lots of miniature painters and you do come across minis every now and then that Just don't quite feel right and often it's because the highlights and the shadows aren't put in the right spot or There isn't enough of a difference between the brightest highlights and the deeper shadows And it just kind of ends up looking a little bit flat, which is definitely how my minis used to look um, and you miss out on that depth of color if you don't have that that good contrast. And so, yeah, I find the doing the Zenith or Prime just really helps with making sure that the highlights go in the right spot and that the brightest ones end up where they should be and the darker shadows end up where they should be. And it really just helps to make it look just right, for lack of a better term. So once the prime was done, it was then onto base coating, and as I always do, I painted it inside out. So starting with the lowest layer and then working up from there. So I started with the skin because that is the lowest layer of the mini, and then working up from there, always painting just the next lowest layer, then the next lowest layer. Never painting something that goes over the top of something else before painting that underneath layer, because if you're painting what goes over the top second, it just makes it so so much easier to get that clean line. Um, between where those two colors meet. Now here, as you can see, I've already started to highlight and shade Cole's pants before I've actually finished base coating because I haven't painted the armor and straps and various pouches and things like that that he's got attached to his pants. And so when I first started painting, I was really stuck in the just processes or the stages approach. So prime, then base coat, then wash, and then highlight, and completely doing one before moving on to the next stage. Whereas here, um, I've started to highlight and shade his pants before doing all of those um, straps and um, things like that, because it's so much easier to, to do it without having to worry about getting a bit of paint on you know, the, the, the straps and the armor that are that higher layer. And also what this makes it much, much easier for is if there's, say, a fold in the clothes that continues underneath one of those straps and then comes out the other side, I can paint that highlight in just one smooth um, brush stroke. And then when I come back later on to then paint all of the, the various bits of leather that go over the top of his pants, that highlight then is consistent and I don't have to do it in two different stages. So this here is just a good example of thinking ahead and knowing what you're going to be doing with each of the different parts of a mini and knowing when do I need to highlight this particular part, when do I need to base coat this particular part, when should I put a wash down for this area here and not just thinking I just I need to base coat and then do this part and then do this part and then do this part and I can't do one before the other. Um, yeah, really, really important that you're looking to see um, the order that you're going to be painting everything in, what you want each part to end up being, and what's the easiest approach going to be. So in this case here with his pants, 
Um, I think the, the game before this was Arcadia Quest Inferno, maybe, and there were lots of times there where I was doing this same sort of thing. Like lots of the the minions in that game, they've got you know their their red skin or whatever, and then they've got armor over the top and bracelets and necklaces and things like that. And to try and get a clean um, shadow against each of those bracelets and bits of jewellery and things like that without getting some paint over the top of the, the jewellery was really, really tricky. So I painted, I did all of the highlighting and shading of the skin first and did dark lines up against all the jewellery and armour and things like that. So that then when I base coated the armour and the jewellery, I just had to just base coat it and then just get a clean line against the shadow. And then that shadow, that deep line is already there and I don't have to come back and try and get that underneath layer um, clean against the higher layer. So yeah, so it's, it's, it's just a, I think it's a good practice to have a look at when you actually need to do everything and don't be stuck in that mindset of, I need to completely finish this step before I then go on to this step, but I need to completely finish that step before I go on to this step. That's how I used to paint. Um, and yeah, but now quite different in that I'm, you know, I'll, I'll be at, at you know, halfway through base coating, I'll then move on to highlighting and then come back to some base coating and then do a wash over here and then finish some base coating over here. You know, it's, it's, it chops and changes depending on how, how I'm painting and what it is that I'm actually painting. Now, I think the highlighting and the shading here on Cole's jacket is worth talking about because I have had lots of trouble with red in the past. Um, I remember, I think one of the, the earliest videos that I put on this channel was um, one of the survivors that you can play as in um, Zombie 15. And he had a red, um, is it the quiver? The, the, the tube that you have on your back for the, for the arrows. Anyway, not important. It was red. And the way that I highlighted that was, I, so I base coated it in heraldic red, I think was the red that I had at the time. And then I mixed in a little bit of white because my colors were restricted at the time. It was very, very early in my painting time. I mixed a little bit of white in to lighten it off. Put a, put that strip, which is starting to turn pink, straight down the middle and then feathered the edges out, then did that again, feathered a little bit less and then did it again and again and again um, until I had that sort of final highlight. But it looked awful because I was turning the, the colour pink. I was restricted with the, you know, the number of reds that I had. Um, what I learnt while painting Arcadia Quest Inferno, which I mentioned just before because there were so many minions that had just red skin, was, um, you know, ways to highlight and shade red. Um, and so I've done a much, much better job here, I think, than if I looked back at ones that I've done in the past. So I started with um, Carnage Red, I think it was, which is one of my deeper reds, but not certainly nowhere near my deepest one. So I started with one that was already on the deeper side because it then it gave it still left me room to go darker with my shadows, but it gave me lots of room to come up with my highlighting. And I found that's where it was tricky with red was going bright enough, finding a bright enough red so that the highlight stood out without having to go to, you know, start mixing in white or something like that and having it turn pink. So base coated with Carnage Red and then it was, I don't know, Bloodstained Red, whatever my darkest one is, thinned that down and then just used that as my shadows and layered that up. So I just put some paint in where the, the recesses were. So we're looking in his back at the moment. So there's, two, there's those two main folds in there. Just put some into those recesses and then just washed the the paint off and then had some wet bristles i do that by licking the brush you can do it in your um your, your water pot and then just feathering those edges out and then just doing that working around um to for all of the shadows then by the time i came back to that point again that had dried off and then i put a little bit more paint in the recess and feathered it a little bit less and then worked around repainted all of the shadows and just layered the shadows making them darker and darker and darker every time and then it's feathering less and less and less and then i finished off with um 
just putting a you know one last line of that dark red in the the deepest part of the recesses and then didn't feather it out just to get that really solid dark line in the middle so then the first stage of my highlight was with heraldic red which is slightly brighter than um, the carnage red and I picked out most of um, most of the jacket so quite a bit of it got some highlighting there because in reality quite a lot of your clothes do actually get some form of light and there was very little um, feathering going on there so I picked out most of the raised edges and um, yeah didn't worry too much about some feathering then I think I mixed that with some magma red and this is then when I started to be a little more careful with where I was picking out my highlights. Still had it thinned down and was still feathering out the edges there. Um, but yeah, starting with, so just get, getting some of that, that paint mix, putting it where the light would hit and then feathering it out from there. And then so going around doing that to all of the different parts that I wanted to highlight. And then when I got back to that first spot that I did that, I then did another, um, you know, another layer with that same mix and it just didn't feather it out quite as far. So as those layers built up, it got brighter and brighter and brighter. And by not feathering as much each time, it helps to get that smooth blend from one layer to the next. And then what I finished with was by mixing in some orange into that, um, Magma, oh, I think I did a magma red on its own and then as a very very final stage I mix some orange in with the magma red and that just really helps to brighten it up and gives that good bit of contrast just as that last highlight and for that one I really really only picked out the parts that would be getting the most light so right on the tops of his shoulders um, and then right on his um, the top of his back and then I very carefully just feathered it out a little bit um, down over those raised sections um, next to each of those folds so that I kept the brightest highlight to a minimum, but it did feather out into, into the other highlights. And I found that that's a really um, good way to highlight and shade with red. But the important thing in there was not starting with a bright red. I started with a deeper red than what I really wanted the jacket to actually finish as, because I knew I would do quite a bit of highlighting with the heretic red. But by starting with a red on the darker side, only slightly on the darker side, it gave me lots of room to go down from my shadows but it still gave me heaps of room to come up with my highlights and that was the important part because the highlighting that I've done with red in the past I found that I didn't have enough room to go with my highlighting and so I was forced to start to mix in some white which of course turns it pink and then you start highlighting with a color that you don't want so yeah so through experience um, I found that that's a that's a good way to highlight and shade red Just a really, really quick note right here as I'm putting that wash down on his hair. In the artwork for Cole, his hair and his beard is black, but I find black to be a, quite a tricky colour to work with, especially for something like hair, because it's going to be getting plenty of light up there. There's going to be high, some level of highlighting and shading. And if you paint with black, well, there isn't much further that you can go down with that to do some shadows. You can come up with it, but it's going to be gray anyway. So when I'm doing something that is black, I tend to avoid actually painting it black. So here I used my darkest gray that I have for his hair and a couple of different spots. And I do come back a bit later on and do his, his beard. Um, and then just putting that black wash over the top brings it down to close to black, but not, you know, sort of quite there. And then when I come back later on and I do some highlighting on his hair, I just grab that same gray that I um, used to base coat it with and just use that to highlight. So it's not black, um, but I generally don't use black for, um, it, for, for, for a spot that's going to be quite bright just because it is very, very tricky to um, actually get those highlights. So I tend to just go with a very, very dark gray. So it kind of looks black, um, but it did give me enough room to have some shadows in there and I can do some highlighting.
Now here I'm up to highlighting and shading all of the leather straps and armor and different things like that that are wrapped around Cole's pets. And I think this is a really, really good example of how my highlighting and shading has changed over time. Because when I first started painting, as you can imagine, my highlighting and shading was very, very basic. I would just do a base coat and then pretty much one level of highlight and one level of shadow, try and sort of achieve the end result in one go. And it just looked really, really disjointed and there was two, um, much of a like a defined line between each of those layers and yeah it just looked really really shonky whereas now i build it up over several layers to try and get smooth blends between each of those layers of highlighting but also what it does by building it up over more layers it allows me to get a greater contrast between my deepest shadow and my brightest highlight and because these minis are painted to be in the middle of the table and then to be seen by people that are sitting around the edge playing the game it really really helps those highlights and shadows to come out and for the mini just to look right and so the process that i've gone through here with all of this leather was i first did the base coat with uh leather brown I think it was I think was the color uh, actually no I think it was earth brown um, leather brown might have been too bright and then I did an Agrax earth shade wash over the top of that now the reason that I did the wash is because there is quite a bit of texture in some of the armor if it was smooth I wouldn't have done that because I think on smooth surfaces washes tend to look a bit funny they're really only useful on textured surfaces and because there are quite a few folds and things like that close to each other the wash was good in that situation then my first level of, or my first layer of highlights was just going back to the base coat, that earth brown, and picking out most of the surfaces because most of them are going to get some level of light. So I just brought it back up to the base coat, but left the parts that would be in shadow, that darker brown from the Agrax earth shade. And then what I did is I mixed in some, that's when I then mixed in some leather brown into the earth brown just to slightly lighten it off. And then I went around and then just started to pick out the raised edges. And if I needed to smooth out the edge of the highlight, as I said earlier, um, I just wash off the paint and have the wet bristles and then just feather those edges out. And I just work my way around picking out all of the, the raised edges and feathering out the, the highlight as I need to and then when I then get back around to that starting point I then mix in just a little bit more of the leather brown um, just to lighten it a bit more and then just again pick out the most raised edges and then just feather it out a little bit less this time and what that helps to do is get a smooth transition from one layer of highlighting to the next so that you don't have that um, really defined line as you go from one color to the next to the next. And then I'm able to just go around um, and then as I get back to the starting point, then just lighten it off again and just keep going lighter and lighter and lighter until I get to the final level of highlighting and that's where I'm really only picking out just just the most raised edges. So I think for, for him it would have been the very, very tips of the top of um, his armor on his legs. So just the very, very top part as it comes over his knee, maybe the, the tops of some of the little um, uh, pouches and things like that and just the straps that go around his thighs just where the the brightest highlights are going to be and going through those stages and just gradually building it up um, helps me to get much much brighter highlights than what I used to because if you're only going to do it in one or two layers it's it just it's the you have way too defined lines between each of those um, levels of highlighting and so you can't actually go very bright but by doing it this way I'm able to go much much brighter but then also much much darker with the shadows so I thought I would just talk through that process there because it is very indicative of my approach and just how I go about just gradually building those layers up and also just how my approach has changed over time and why it changed and I pretty much follow that same process for all of my highlighting and shading. The only thing that might change is that if there aren't 
um, because if it's not a really finely textured surface, I might not do the wash because if there are gradual folds, I'll just do it with, I'll do the shadows with layering like I did with his jacket, but in the armor there, because um, a lot of the, the texture was really, really fine and close together, the wash worked perfectly for that. But in terms of just gradually building up with, with the colors, feathering out each, each layer, slowly building it up, um, that's pretty much how I go about all of my highlighting and shading. And now I'm on to some really, really basic basing. So all I'm doing here is just mixing up a bit of a splotchy kind of light and dark gray mix, um, and then working in a little bit of brown as well. And then I just paint a, some dark gray lines to make the edges some tiles. And then I finish off with a really, really fine black line in the middle of those dark gray lines that I paint to make it look like um, some of the tiles that are on the inside of the base um, in the artwork of the game. So all of the Xenos, their, their bases were done to look like they're coming from the outside all of the survivors I'm doing to have make it look like they're on the inside. So I just I just picked out one of the floor surfaces that I thought I could probably achieve, um, and I've gone with that for all of the survivors. And for such a simple, simple approach, I was actually really, really happy with how these end up looking, especially when they're standing in a group. And I do think that little black line that I end up doing right down the middle of these grey lines really, really did help to make it look like you've got those joins in the tiles and then there's a bit of a shadow around them. So yeah, really, really happy with how this came up for, for such a basic, just simple job. I think it's good to show that you don't always have to go super over the top and doing awesome terrain and things like that. You can just paint a base. And with this last stage here being done, Cole is finished. So thank you very, very much for spending some time watching me paint another mini. Like I said earlier, I would love it if you could leave a comment down below to let me know which format of video you prefer, whether you like to have the, the footage um, left in real time so that you can more closely see what's being done, or if you prefer it being sped up so that you can see more footage in the same amount of time. Um, if you have not been past the Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts that I have set up for this channel, please do stop by there, especially Instagram. That's where I'm my most active so you can see what I'm painting at the time and what videos are going to be coming out. Um, and please do like and subscribe to stay up to date with these videos. I do have a number of games from Kickstarter coming soon. Tainted Grey will be coming soon, so I'll be doing videos for that. So hit the subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with all of those. So with all that being said, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.